Good afternoon. My name is Peter Nord. I'm the Presbyterian Executive for the Presbyterian of Baltimore. Knowing how people enjoy long sermons, I'll try to be short as well. I've come here speaking not just for myself and my people, but also on behalf of three other religious leaders in this state. Bob Eloff, the Bishop of the Episcopal Diocese of Maryland, John Scholl, the Bishop of Baltimore Washington Conference of the United Methodist Church, John Beckenbach, the Conference Minister of the Central Atlantic Conference of the United Church of Christ. Together, we represent some thousand or more churches, tens of thousands of members in this area. And I think the beliefs that we share in common are commonly held by the members of our churches as well. I want to talk a little bit about ethics. I want to talk a little bit about some biblical support as well. In the story of Genesis, the creation of Adam and Eve speak of God forming them out of clay and then breathing life into them. The egg, the sperm, are the stuff of life. The fertilized egg is the stuff of life. The embryo, even in a petri dish, is the stuff of life. The infant born, gulping its first breath, is truly the embodiment of life. And at each step along the way, we are called to ethically, morally, and biblically to respect and honor what is. The positions we hold, I believe, are fundamentally pro-life in a true sense. We are called to respect and honor and value the stuff of life, but we are not called to idolize it. Embryos in their earliest stages of development, which would otherwise be discarded, should be made available for research but with these following limitations. Thank you very much. Just one question. I appreciate your history of when people um, decided when life was considered uh, uh, life. You know. uh, with, with the technology that we've had uh, of late and with uh, uh, research into DNA, have we not been determined that uh, through science? That when the egg and the sperm combine, they create totally new DNA? Doesn't that create a new entity? I think. Um, I mean, I think science is kind of giving us an answer that maybe we don't have to come up with an opinion. Because it's pretty defined. I mean, otherwise, we would be using DNA in, in uh, uh, police. Uh, I think the, the, the creation of life is a continuum. There are those who think that there's a particular moment when it all changes. But really it's a continuum. And the longer you go down that continuum, from my perspective, the more sacred and the more easy you are. Do you disagree that the DNA is unique at conception? No, I do not. Okay. Um, I would just add that um, one can concede that uh, human embryos are human life, as I would, but um, argue that the question isn't when human life begins, but when a particular human life um, it has the moral status of a person and becomes a member of the moral community. And it's not sufficient on many philosophers accounts um, to say that this is a human life. You also need to show that it's um, a member of the moral community by virtue of having the status of, this, of persons and to have um, characteristics and capacities that more develop uh, human lives. Okay, I'm going to turn it over to Andrew. Thank you very much.